In 2017, Ubisoft changed their logo for the first time in 14 years to this. While at the time we thought it was a mere simplistic update to their previous purple portal design, recent releases have gotten us to realize that this logo may be more symbolic in the direction their franchises are going. This is all yours, so sit back, relax, and find us some good footage. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. It's never been above game studios throwing sly references to their other franchises, previous installments, or even completely different games under the same publishers. But in recent years, Ubisoft have gone above and beyond when it comes to the intertextuality of their fan service. It's gotten to the point where franchise timelines are starting to merge together similar to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We now believe they may be forming together into three major timelines represented by the three spirals seen on their logo. Why three timelines and not one? Because of the ending of Far Cry 5, which saw the world hit by a nuclear war in 2018, which was doubled down in the recently released Far Cry New Dawn. Present day sequences in Assassin's Creed Odyssey don't reflect this world changing event. So unless Ubisoft plans on setting all their future franchises with that nuclear backdrop, it's doubtful that we'll see Leila Hassan holding it down in a fallout shelter for future installments, especially since that would ruin the narrative that series has been building upon since Origins. How's it going out there? Well, no threats in view. Still, Ubisoft have never been strangers to throwing in links between games in the same series. While all of the assassins are known to each other dating back hundreds of years, there's more bizarre connections than just equipping Edward Kenway with Itzio's trademark costume. One of the first major connections to a shared universe came in 2014 with Watch Dogs. While the release was a little polarizing, for those who stuck with it, there were more than a few hidden easter eggs to be found. In one of the many segments where Aiden Pierce can hack into personal cameras, we see a clip of a father watching his son play video games. He seems to be playing Assassin's Creed Revelation specifically, though his dad doesn't enjoy the game nearly as much as the kid, instead asking why he's talking to the guy he just murdered. This guy is involved in some heavy shit. However, the biggest connection comes in a criminal convoy mission, where Aiden is tasked to kill Abstergo CCO Olivier Garneau, who was originally introduced in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. That mission even claims that he's, quote, targeted by the Brotherhood. At the time, this was widely considered to be an easter egg between the two games, but the link was made canon in 2017's Assassin's Creed Origins through the files on Leila Hassan's computer, which show that murder taking place at the hands of Aiden Pierce himself. There's actually a connection between Assassin's Creed and another Ubisoft franchise. Most recently, there was a limited time for honor event called For the Creed, which saw the Assassins and Templars introduced as major playable factions. It was a return to the Renaissance period fans loved so much with the Ezio trilogy. And to capitalize on Ezio's popularity, the For Honor dev team included him as the general you had to fight if you found yourself on the side of the Templar order. If you were lucky enough to be an assassin, then you'd be fighting the main antagonist of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Cesare Borgia, all over again. While this would certainly be cool enough on its own, the teasers threw out some even more intriguing hits, namely the appearance of the Abstergo logo. Abstergo's position as the malignant corporation fronting the modern day Templars makes this all the more sinister, since in Black Flag and beyond, they're portrayed as a video game studio. Perhaps Ubisoft's meta jokes have finally come full circle, and by playing for honor, we are actually accessing ancient memories. Or maybe Ubisoft really have been Abstergo Industries all along. This building is barely six months old, but Abstergo Entertainment has been a studio for a few years, since 2010. Based on all that, we can confirm that Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, and For Honor set up the foundations of Timeline 1. Ubisoft has a naval combat game on the horizon titled Skull and Bones, and while it hasn't been released yet, the fact that it's a spiritual successor to Black Flag would make it a likely candidate for this timeline as well. Fire she bangs! On to Ubisoft's next big series, Far Cry, where only recently have the games started to connect to each other through their similar premises. Charismatic complex villains, large closed off maps, and the knowledge that nobody is coming to help you. But one unusually common thread throughout Far Cry is Herc, a unique character who has shown up in every Far Cry since Far Cry 3. You even meet his ancient ancestor, Erki the Thinker, in Far Cry Primal. Ubisoft couldn't resist throwing in a thinly veiled Assassin's Creed jab in that game through Erki's quest, Fly Like a Bird, which mocks the death-defying leaps of faith all the assassins do. Though unfortunately for him, that's not a hay bale he lands in. Since it's more of a spoof, a moment like this doesn't really connect the two game universes together. Uh, the Erky Bad Dash! Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
However, the most recent Far Cry entry, New Dawn, has a connection to another major Ubisoft franchise, Splinter Cell. While you don't see Sam Fisher himself, you do come across a series of notes signed with his initials. These notes refer to the immediate aftermath of Far Cry 5's nuclear apocalypse ending, as well as Fisher's concerns about his daughter's well-being after his plane, the Paladin, crashes down in rural Ohio. He also throws him some stray comments referring to the division in Chicago, which is surely a reference to that other big Ubisoft IP. This may have a deeper connection than you think, though, as Sam notes indicate that he's heading to Washington, D.C. to find Sarah. And guess where the upcoming The Division 2 happens to take place? I never pictured my first trip to D.C. would be like this. Considering that series shows the United States in disarray, it is possible to link that title with the events of Far Cry 5, since that game's villain, Joseph Seed, used the unseen political chaos as his proof to assert his message upon his followers. This is the world we built for our children? Communities being torn apart? Walls being erected? Because leaders are too impotent to act. Splinter Cell Sam Fisher's long-running voice actor Michael Ironside took a brief hiatus from the role in 2013, leaving Splinter Cell fans searching for his voice everywhere. He returned as Fisher in a DLC for Ghost Recon Wildlands. It was this other guy, though. Army infiltration. He wore a bandana or something. I heard he finally retired. Really? Yep. It's only me. And while his presence is mostly highlighted by the retirement of Solid Snake, there's a key piece of information that would tie both Ghost Recon and Splinter Cell to the Far Cry universe. In the closing cutscene to Sam's mission in Wildlands, his tech operator Karen says this. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs says there's a possible empty quiver. Empty quiver is the United States military terminology for the seizure, theft, or loss of a functioning nuclear weapon. And since the ending of Far Cry 5 ends with a nuclear apocalypse that we now know that Sam was a part of, the connection is way too big to be coincidental. After all, it would only take the detonation of one nuclear bomb to get everyone to launch their missiles in retaliation, if planned correctly. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. We're not done with Ghost Recon Wildlands, though. It had another crossover DLC event starring Kavera, Twitch, and Valkyrie from Rainbow Six Siege, linking that title to this continuity as well. Furthermore, all of Siege's seasons since the release of Far Cry 5 have taken place outside the United States in nations unlikely to be targeted by superpowers in a nuclear war. It's also worth pointing out that Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, Splinter Cell, and The Division have another unique calling card. Tom Clancy, where previous titles have had endless cross-references between series in the past. While the author may have passed away in 2013, his estate continues the allowance of titles under his name. Based on all this information, we can confirm that all of Ubisoft's active Tom Clancy franchises, as well as Far Cry, are set in Timeline 2. Get down! Everybody, get down! So that leaves us with a few other titles. Rayman, Beyond Good and Evil, The Crew, and Starlink Battle for Atlas. Immediately, all these games except The Crew have one unique factor in that they're all set on different worlds, while Starlink and the upcoming Beyond Good and Evil have the possibility of space travel within different single solar systems. So it's very easy for these franchises to coexist in the same timeline without affecting one another in a major way. But then where does The Crew fit in all this? Well, it turns out there is a connection between Starlink and The Crew too. Both titles have the possibility for vehicles to change shape. That's almost it, but there's one problem. Where do the rabbits fit into this, as they seem to have connections to all three timelines? Well, luckily there's a factor that doesn't anchor them to any fixed dimensions. In Raving Rabbits Travel in Time, it's established that they have a time machine that's made out of a washing machine, where they would cause mischief and change parts of history in their image. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle took this concept one step further by establishing that the device is also able to travel to different universes. In that case, the Nintendo's Super Mario universe, which obviously isn't part of any Ubisoft timeline. This would mean that the Rabbids can easily hop between dimensions either inside or outside Ubisoft's canon. And since they're not very bright and are prone to causing ripples in the space-time continuum by incompetence or mischief, if you find any continuity issues like key items outside of these theorized established timelines, you can basically explain that issue as the Rabbids did it. What? So, let's recap one last time. Timeline number one consists of Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, For Honor, and possibly Skull and Bones. 
Timeline number two consists of Tom Clancy's The Division, Rainbow Six Siege, Ghost Recon, and Splinter Cell, as well as Far Cry. And timeline number three consists of The Crew, Starlink, Rayman, and Beyond Good and Evil, with the rabbits being able to travel between any of these timelines, though obviously not intentionally. That would be frightening if that's true. The rabbits being the bridge between timelines? Who knows what chaos they could cause? <laughs> Ubisoft may yet find more opportunities for easter eggs and crossovers, however, through their recent team-ups with Nintendo. We were lucky enough to get Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and the Star Fox team has appeared in the Switch version of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Could this also mean that other Nintendo franchises are likely to cross over as well? Only time will tell what ambitious crossovers Ubisoft will come up with in the future. And when the world is ready to be born anew, we will step into the light. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Place, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.